Welcome to the Prepped and Polished Podcast, the podcast that empowers you to take control of your education. Featuring weekly interviews with influencers in the world of education, as well as tutoring tips, lessons, and updates. And now, here's your host, Alexis Oliver. This is episode 106 with homeschool expert Pam Barnhill of the Homeschool Snapshots podcast. And welcome back to the Prepped and Polished podcast. This is episode 106. Be sure to join the Prepped and Polished community. We're on all the social media channels, the Facebooks, Twitters, the Periscopes. Just type Prepped and Polished in there and you'll find us. Also go to our site, preppedandpolished.com. Sign up for our free ACT essay class. It's free on the front page of our site, preppedandpolished.com, to access that. Have a question or reaction during or after the podcast? Email us at radio at preppedandpolished.com. Let's get to today's guest. This is episode 106. I'm talking to teacher, homeschool mom, podcast host, uh, Pam Barnhill of the popular Homeschool Snapshots podcast and your Morning Basket podcast. She has two podcasts. On today's episode, Pam talks about her popular educational websites and podcasts where you can find resources for uh, homeschool parents and for parents interested in homeschooling their children. And if you're looking for a curriculum you can use outside the school or plan to homeschool your child, you have to listen to my interview today with Pam. So let's get right to it. This is episode 106 with Homeschool expert Pam Barnhill of the Homeschool Snapshots podcast. Hi, Pam. Thanks for coming on the Prepped and Polished podcast. How are you doing today? Great. Thank you so much for having me on. Great. Glad you're here. Now, can you share with us, start off uh, by sharing with us a little bit about your background, um, perhaps focusing on some pivotal moments that really brings you here with us today. Um, as a homeschool mom, but and also kind of like a leading voice in in homeschooling your children. Oh, leading voice. <laughs> yeah. Um, <how's> that? <laughs> well, my my background is in education. I was a public school teacher in for middle and high school for um, about seven years, and I was a journalism teacher. That was my specialty, and um, I got hired away by the yearbook company to do. Um, yearbook consulting and training and things of that nature um, for high school and middle school students and I just absolutely loved my job. Um, to me it was one step better than teaching because I got to set my own schedule and work from home and I still got to work with the kids and the teachers and just helping them make the best possible yearbooks they could. And yearbook advisors are a uh, a breed of people that unfortunately they they're often thrust into a position that they never asked for or desired and they often find themselves drowning and so I just loved being able to help these poor ladies who were often first and second year teachers and just you know felt like I don't know where to start and so so it was it was a great satisfaction for me to go in and help them know where to start well then um we had children <laughs> and the intention was for me to go back to work um, after we had these children but I was sitting here looking at this little child and I'm like I can't put her anywhere and go back to work yeah. um, and you know we lived far away from family and my boss was great he let me work part-time for about six months while I was kind of wrestling with this in my heart and we lived far away from family and I didn't you know it, it was going to be daycare or nothing and I just couldn't bring myself to do it I was a late later in life mom mm -hmm. and I'd waited a long time for this and I don't know I just wasn't able to do it and so um I decided to quit working which was a, it was a pretty big decision for me and then as the years went on I cannot put my finger on a pivotal moment where I said you know what we're gonna homeschool mm. but um you know it was something I felt led to do um I struggle a little with um the educational system as it is today all the emphasis on testing mm. and achievement and things of that nature and right. and just what I had seen in the classroom and the stress on the kids and so um, I started homeschooling and after I started homeschooling actually I started blogging first um, but my blog morphed into a space where I talked a lot about homeschooling okay. and then a couple of years ago, I was able to take some of the experience that I had helping those teachers um, create those yearbooks and kind of turn it into um, helping other homeschool moms 
homeschool. To me, it was a natural extension of what I had done before um, in my career and had been pretty successful at. And so um, now I spend my days homeschooling my kids. They're 10, 8, and 6, um, a little girl and two little boys. And um, I direct our local homeschool co-op. We started that from scratch, oh, wow. and um, we have 13 families, and it's just a wonderful space for everyone there. And, um, and then I have my blog and my podcast where I try to help other homeschool moms who might be feeling overwhelmed or are looking for something different. Um, now, tell us a little bit about your website, uh, edsnapshots.com. Who does this website serve, and what will we find there? Okay, well, it's edsnapshots.com, and it started off as a, um, a scrapbooking blog about eight years ago um, where I was posting my scrapbooking pages, and it was called Everyday Snapshots. And so when it came time to actually buy a real URL, Everyday Snapshots wasn't available. So I went with ED because I thought this can stand for education too. And um, it, it serves homeschooling moms, homeschooling moms who are looking for a resource um, homeschooling moms who are looking for ideas to help them read more with their kids. Homeschooling moms who are looking to do the practice of morning time, which is something I focus on quite a bit. Um, mm-hmm. Homeschooling moms who are looking for um, encouragement or ideas from other homeschooling moms. And that's what we do through the Homeschool Snapshots podcast. Nice. And um, now you have not one but two podcasts. So <laughs> tell us about the Homeschool Snapshots podcast and your Morning Basket podcast. When do they air? Why did you decide to create two and how are they different from one another? Okay, well, I decided to create two because I'm a glutton for punishment. Because <laughs> um, we all know podcasting is so easy. <laughs> yes. Um, podcasting is a lot of work. Um, I knew I wanted to do a podcast last year. Um, I knew I wanted to have a voice in the homeschooling space. And there are a lot of homeschooling blogs out there, but um, there are not a large number of homeschooling podcasts. So I thought it would be a way to distinguish myself in the homeschooling space. Mm -hmm. And so I started, I came up with this idea for homeschool snapshots. And what I wanted to do, very much like your own, keeping it like under 30 minutes, Mm -hmm. um, a a 30-minute podcast that moms could listen to while they were washing the dishes Mm -hmm. or um, folding the laundry or, you know, if they got to sneak away for a daily walk or something like that. And just giving them a peek inside the day of another homeschooler. Um, homeschool moms really like to see, like they know, like to know what other people are doing with their day. And so that was the idea was we're going to give them, it's a peek inside the day of the homeschooler next door. And um, I basically work from a stock set of questions. And so if you listen to multiple Um, episodes of the podcast, you're hearing me ask a lot of the same questions over and over again, but that's done purposefully. It's not because I can't think up new questions, (laughs) but it's done because um, I want people to hear different answers to the same questions. I want them to know that there's not one right way to do this. There are many right ways to do this, and actually the right way to do this is the way that works best for your family. And um, that's the point we're trying to get across with the Homeschool Snapshots podcast. And it's got a great little following. And um, I think the people who love it are the people who appreciate it for what it's it's trying to offer, those little glimpses. Um, Then last summer, I decided, um, well, I actually decided before that it came about through a process, but I decided I was going to write a book on the homeschool practice of morning time. And morning time, um, for your audience who may not be familiar with this term, um, the name is kind of arbitrary. Um, It doesn't have to be done in the morning. But basically, this is a time, and it can be named anything that you want it to. There are a lot of homeschoolers who have different names for it. But um, this is a time where you bring your entire family together at the table, and you're learning in community. 
because often as homeschooling moms, we kind of have that one room schoolhouse thing going on where we have the fifth grader and we have the third grader and we have the kindergartner. And we, a lot of us homeschool moms come from the public school mindset where, well, if your child is in fifth grade, they should be doing this determined set of things. And the third grader should be doing things that are completely different. And the first grader should be doing things that are completely different. And there's not a lot of community learning. And so what we're doing with morning time is bringing the whole family to the table at one time. We're learning as a community. We're all learning the same thing so we can foster these great discussions, Socratic questioning, Um, playing off of each other, learning from each other, older ones learning from younger ones and younger ones learning from older ones. Um, So we're doing those kinds of things in morning time. And it's also a great spot to put those little things that tend to fall through the cracks. We get so busy worrying about the three R's of reading, writing, and arithmetic that we sometimes forget truth, goodness, and beauty. Mm -hmm. And so that gives you a place to focus on things like ritual, and recitation of poetry, Shakespeare, reading aloud beautiful works, so many of those things that get pushed aside, certainly in public education, unfortunately, but also in homeschools, too. Wow, that's fantastic. Um, now, what, what are some, talking about homeschooling, what are some pros to homeschooling your children? And I think you already touched upon that. But, yeah. But what comes to your mind? Some pros. Um, Student teacher ratio is probably one of the biggest (laughs) pros, um, depending on how large your family is. Um, But yeah, that that's a big one right there. The fact that I'm able to um, and this can be a pro and a con, I'll be honest with you. But the fact that I'm able to tailor my students education to them. So if you have a, a student who learns something quickly, they can shoot ahead in that subject. And if you have a student who's struggling, there's no shame at all. Um, and you're not holding anybody back by meeting them where they are. Um, the tricky part and why this can sometimes be a con is as a mom, making sure I challenge my children adequately. Um, I want to be sure that I'm doing that. But th- those are a couple to me, some of the biggest pros. Um, the fact that I don't have to pack lunches, wait in a car line, or have anybody anywhere at a certain time, or do two or three hours of homework in the evening is another is another great pro to homeschooling. Wow! Yeah, I never thought of that. Um, now, now, what are some of the so, some of the cons to challenges? We don't have to say cons when homeschooling, and how do you overcome the, those? Well, for us, like I said, making sure I challenge my students on an an appropriate level because, you know, they're kids. And so they're going to come, Mom, this is hard. I don't want to do this. And I'm a mom. And so my heart says, you know, am I pushing them too much? Am I Mm -hmm. asking them to do more than what they're capable of? And so I'm constantly having to be vigilant to make sure that I'm, you know, I study a lot. I read a lot to make sure that I'm doing things that are developmentally appropriate for my children. So I'm not pushing them too fast, but I'm also not um, letting them talk me into slacking off. Um, I know a lot of people feel like the social aspect is a con to homeschooling. Right, right. I personally um, do not think so because my children are some of the most social people out there. Um, They have great conversations and interact with people no matter what their age um, race, ethnicity, um, you know, abilities, anything. And they're, they just see people as people because I think we've managed to sidestep a lot of prejudices that are out there um, because we're the number one influence on our children and what they think. And um, I'm the number one model for my kids. They act like I act for better or worse. Um, sometimes that's a bad thing. And then other times it's able to be a good thing because they see me exhibit kindness to everyone I meet. They do the same thing as well. Um, So that's great. And then we also, you know, people think, well, are your kids at home? Are they not getting to be with anybody? And no, we go and do, um, sometimes I feel way too much. We have our co-ops on Tuesday. We're there with other families. We do numerous field trips and they're um, in dance and karate and, um, seems like a million different things church activities wow so 
Now, one thing that comes to my mind is, can any parent homeschool their child, or do you have to have a talent to homeschool, like a teaching background, for example? Well, you certainly don't need a teaching background, um, because sometimes I feel like my teaching background is a larger hindrance to me than it is a help to me. Um, Sometimes I feel like it gets in the way. All of the... um, kind of preconceived notions that I've brought from not only my own 13 years in the public school system, but the seven years I spent teaching as well. Um, I think the biggest thing you need to homeschool your children is a desire to do well Mm. at homeschooling. It's like anything else that you set out to do. Let's say you want to learn to take better pictures. You want to be a better photographer. The number one thing that you need in order to be a better photographer is a desire to be a better photographer, a desire to learn how to do this and do this well. So I think if you're a parent and you're like, well, you know, I'm just going to open some books and do them with my kids and I'm never going to have to study or work at it, you're going to be at a disadvantage. But if you have a desire to go out and study and learn, you know, I'm big on homeschool mom professional development. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm in a local book club where um, it was a book club I started and about eight or nine of us get together once a month and we read and discuss education books and um, help each other through problems. I have a number of online groups that I'm a part of. I take classes and, and, you know, there's nobody, my husband's not saying you need to do this. It's just something that I've, I've taken on myself because I feel like in order to be the best homeschool teacher I can be. Um, I need to educate myself on how to do it. So I think desire. You don't really need a talent. You just need desire to do it. That's awesome. Um, Now, thinking about your podcast and some of the guests that you had on, uh, tell us uh, some of the the things that you learned from from some of your podcast guests that just come to your mind. Um, Okay. Tidbits. I can do that. I had a lovely lady on Homeschool Snapshots, and her name was um, Carol Joyside, and she is a speaker in the homeschool community, and um, she's just absolutely fabulous. She actually has a set of DVDs, and I'll have to send you a link to these. Um, She has a class. Um, Mm -hmm. I think it's Compass Media is where those are, but I can send you the link. And um, she teaches you how to homeschool simply using great literature but the thing that she said to me i was asking her about motivating children because believe it or not um it it never ceases to confound me that my kids need to be motivated to learn (laughs) because it's like guys come on we're three to four hours a day you're not having to go sit in a school all day but they still need to be motivated so i was asking her about motivating the kids what do you do with with children who um you know are grumbling about doing school and they're and they're not motivated at all and she kind of knocked me back and she said um usually i find that when children who have not been to school are not motivated to learn it's because mom is no fun Mm. it's because mom is trying to move through that checklist and has forgotten about relationships and um, joy in that relationship when you're homeschooling and she said you know homeschool moms tend to be firstborn um, kind of type A and She's describing me perfectly. (laughs) You know, like, here I've invited you on my podcast and you're calling me out in this minute. (laughs) But, um, but yeah, that was, that was something great that I needed to hear and I need to listen to it often. So just thinking about, and you know, she wasn't talking about making every single lesson fun. She was talking about just me as a person having fun with my kids and enjoying my kids and being silly and doing some of the things that make them laugh and bring a little bit of joy to their day as opposed to just laying the checklist in front of them and saying, okay, this is what we have to do today. Let's get this checked off. So that's huge. Yeah, that was that was a big aha moment. Um, I recently had Susan Wise Bauer. Um. She's the author of The Well-Trained Mind. It's uh, one of probably one of the larger selling homeschool books of all time about classical homeschooling. Oh, goodness, it came out in the 90s, I think. Mm-hmm. 
And um, she's just wonderful. She's a wonderful speaker and a wonderful resource. And she really kind of surprised me because we were, we were having a conversation and she mentioned something about homeschooling success um, being not, not having gone crazy at the end of your homeschool journey. And, you know, her book is very academic and a lot of people consider it very rigorous and, um, you know, it, you know, classical education, you think about it being rigorous and academic. And I said, oh, Susan, this surprises me that your definition of homeschooling success is for mom not to be crazy at the end of it. It's not that your kids get into Harvard. It's that mom's not crazy. She says, well, yeah, she said, but actually the biggest definition of homeschooling success is that your children love you in the end. Mm. And so I think so much so homeschooling comes back to being about relationship. You know, as much as we're trying to make sure that these kids are um, doing what they want to in their life, whether that be going to college or learning a trade, um, you know, being put in touch with the, the great voices of the past, you know, reading the good literature, and um, having skills to see them through in the world, it's also about the relationship in the family. Awesome. Um, and it kind of ties with your your first tidbit, which is just about you know making sure that you step you know be in the moment and have have a good, have fun and, and foster those relationships. Yeah. Um, now, what projects are you currently working on? What's going on right right now with you? I am currently cookie baking. <laughs> All right. Yeah, you're talented. You, you do a lot of things. No, I'm on vacation. Um, yeah, I, I'm taking the month of December off for Christmas, and we'll, we'll um, jump back up after that. But we're getting the next season of both podcasts ready to go. I've already recorded a few episodes and getting those ready to be packed up and sent to the editor. Um, and other than that, I have no huge projects coming for the first of the year. It's going to be... Same old, same old as far as blogging and um, and just, you know, reaching out to people who are reaching out to me and answering questions and, and things of that nature. But we're super excited about the next season of the podcast. Um, Homeschool Snapshots is starting off with um, Melissa Wiley, who is the, a children's book author. She wrote um, the Inch and Rolly series and also The Prairie Thief. And um, then the other podcast your morning basket is starting off with sonia schaefer from simply charlotte mason nice um what how can we best get in touch with you in your in your work your podcasts and well you can certainly find me at edsnapshots.com and then the podcast um your morning basket and homeschool snapshots podcast are both on itunes and stitcher so you can find them there as well awesome and um any teenage to the teenage listeners today, um, they're getting ready for you know the, uh, the transition to, to young adulthood. Um, you know, maybe any any words of wisdom before they uh, depart. Oh, words of wisdom for teenagers. It's been a long time since I've talked to teenagers. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I actually talk to them in my writing class every week. Um, I would just you know enjoy being a teen. And nice. don't feel like you've got to go into college your very first year and have your whole life figured out. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm a big fan of the gap year concept, mm -hmm. taking that year off between high school and college to maybe do some service or some traveling, some mission work, you know, any way that you can get out and see a larger world than what you've been exposed to. That was the biggest thing for me going to college was, um, there was so, you know, I came from a small town. There was so much I had never seen, and it just kind of blew me away. And so it was such a huge transition for me. And so I think having that gap year, getting out and seeing a lot of things, and whether you do that between high school and college or after your freshman year of college or something like that, and getting a feel for things before you peg yourself into this is what I'm doing with my life. And this is where I'm going, and this is the only place I'm going to be because it can change. Definitely. Great, great advice. Well, Pam, thanks for coming on the Prepped and Polished podcast and really appreciate your time. Well, thank you so much for having me. It was great fun. 
And this wraps up our show today with homeschool expert Pam Barnhill of the Homeschool Snapshots podcast. Make sure to check out Pam's website, www.edsnapshots.com, to access her two podcasts and to get tons of free educational resources for homeschooling your child. I hope you enjoyed episode 106 for another related homeschooling conversation. Uh, Make sure to go back all the way back to episode number 15 my interview with homeschool expert uh, Brian Ricks. Episode 107 is coming soon. It's our next tutoring tips episode, how to get an 800 on your SAT chemistry test. Thank you for joining us on the Prepped and Polished podcast. Now go out there and take control of your education. You've been listening to the Prepped and Polished podcast. For more information, check out preppedandpolished.com. Also, you can follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Thanks for listening. Class dismissed.